Hey guys, Jess Halleck here. I could not think of a better tutorial to start this year off with than curling. It's been over a year since I did an updated one and I've learned a few things and I can't wait to share. So we're gonna go over curling basics and then the why. There's a few things that I do and learning why I do them definitely helps when you're trying to incorporate it on your own hair. So first of all, I'm gonna be using the Babyliss Pro Nano Titanium one inch. This is not the only curling iron I love. I'm gonna do another video on reviewing a few different irons that I love. There's a Hot Tools one, there's a Bioionic one, um, but this one has just been the one that I use in my salon most of the time, but I would for sure go with a one inch. Even though the style is like bouncy curls and everything, that can happen on day two. I would still start with a one inch just so that it lasts a lot longer because when I do a one and a quarter, I can do a one and a quarter, but when I do a one and a quarter, it just doesn't end up being the same and it definitely doesn't last as long. And I'd rather only put heat on my hair once or twice a week with an iron rather than needing to touch it up like, you know, every morning. So that's what I recommend, a one inch for sure. The other thing I'm gonna be using is product wise, I am super simple. My hair is only freshly blown out. I didn't put anything volumizing in it, just the basics for blow drying. And I would recommend, this is a dry shampoo, but it has some texture in it. So we'll talk about this of why. And then this is Texturiza from Unite, and this is their dry texture spray. So these two things are what I recommend. Um, this will only be for a certain reason if it pertains to you. So this one for sure, you're gonna wanna add to your collection. And then just for organizing and brushing my hair, I'm gonna use my ensemble alligator clips just to keep everything out of the way and then the Ensemble Detangler. And this brush I love because I can brush out my curls and it doesn't brush out what I just did completely. It just detangles and it feels really good on my head. So there's that. Okay, let's get started. So I only section my hair into three sections. If someone has really thick hair, maybe four. And if someone has really fine hair, maybe two. But for the most part, I'm only doing three sections. And the reason is because there's really just no, there's no point in doing a whole bunch of sections because honestly, you're not going to break it up that much, especially with the style of curl being more bouncy and not super curly, like those beach curls. I mean, there's a time and a place for them, but it's not necessarily the style right now. Okay, so I'm not gonna do anything on my bottom layer as far as spraying anything, just because it really doesn't matter. I'm telling you, people really overcomplicate this. I break my hair into just two sections and I pull it forward. If you have more hair than I do, feel free to do another one. But I'm just gonna go in totally flat and wind it up, pull it out. And I always leave an inch, maybe two inches at the most out. If you want more of the bouncy curl, go ahead and click through. Don't drag your iron. That's always gonna be really harsh on your hair. Just click through it. And if you'll notice, I'm always keeping a finger on this clamp and it's so that I can like clip or like tap this open and close. I see people, if they, they see us drag the iron through, but we're not like leaving the clamp completely shut because that would be terrible. I'm just slightly opening it so I can click through and turn it without it snagging. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more curl. Both of these I'm curling away from my face, just keeping it simple. And look at my thumb, I'm just clicking through it. Heat setting, I do keep this on the hottest personally, but I can move through it quickly. If you're slow or you're just learning, you can practice with it completely off or turn the heat down to like 250. Just so if you're gonna redo it, it's not the end of the world, but I would highly recommend practicing with the iron off completely before you go in and really commit just because it's a lot of heat on your hair. I am not on board with flat irons. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've never done a flat iron because it's so much heat and I'm super blonde and I don't want it to break. And my experience in um, the salon and behind the chair, people who always had breakage around their face always used a flat iron, even just once a week. They're like, but just once, I know but for some reason it makes a huge difference. I've just really avoided it. And everyone that I've recommended not to do it anymore or to, to kick the habit, they, they are seeing way better results with their hair. They're not getting the breakage around their face, around their hairline. Okay, so anything around my face, I'm gonna over direct. I also, look how flat this section is. So the curl style I like to do is ribbon. There are two things that affect how your curls look, and then there's two things that affect how long it lasts. So one thing is how you're wrapping it around the curling iron. You can do, like people just fully wrap, like kind of like a wand curl, and that's more, um, has more texture to it. It's like more beachy, 
Uh, another way that you could do is when you clip it in and then you see them unwrap and twist and unwrap and twist and unwrap and twist, that also makes a very beachy curl. To mimic the curls you would get from a roller set, an air wrap, something like that, you wanna keep it as flat as possible. I also think that that just makes it last longer and also keeps it from tangling in the future, especially if you have a naturally wavy curly texture, we don't need to be adding to that. So I'm gonna, gonna be doing a ribbon curl. So keeping a very flat section, it's gonna be flat against the iron, close it. And I do really over direct towards my face. So over directing is one of the steps that makes it last longer. So pretty much everything on this bottom layer, just so you know, I'm going to um, curl away from my face. So my clamp is always facing forward when I'm curling away from my face, not to the back and curling forward. So I have a very flat section. Over directing means that instead of my section being here, I'm gonna swing my handle forward to over direct the curl towards my face. Basically that just means that the curl will start higher up on the head and it has longer to fall. So I'm clamping it, over directing my handle. I hope that was a lot easier to see. <laughs> because I was curling without looking in the mirror and that's a little scary. <laughs> I'm kind of impressed with myself. Okay, in the back, don't get hung up on what the back, back looks like. It doesn't matter, I promise you. Just curl it to the best of your ability. You don't need to break this up into a bunch of small sections. Just get a curl back there. It really doesn't matter. And then clamp through. Now on this side, I wanna show you that over directing again. Another thing, when you are over directing, I like to start with a fresh, I, I like to start with a fresh section. I like to brush it so it's super smooth. The What I relate it to is like, if you're ironing something and you like, you take something really crinkly, it's gonna take a while to flatten it out. But if you start with something that's really fluffy and already smooth and then press it, it's going to look a lot better and it's gonna stay in that same shape for a lot longer. So I'm clamp clamping it, it's totally flat. I'm clicking through with my finger on the clamp and I'm swinging the handle forward towards my face, especially on these front sections, don't sit there and hold it. I remember when I was younger, I would sit there and like count to eight <laughs> for each section. <sighs> Where was my mother? No one told me that that was gonna fry off my hair. But back in the day, it was really popular to have super short hair and I totally had it. So I guess I just didn't realize or have to experience the consequences. Okay, so if you have more hair than I do, like I said, you can break this up into even smaller sections. But especially if you're just going quick, you could even do less sections than I am. You don't have to really focus so much on this and make sure that they're totally perfect because it doesn't matter. What matters is the technique that you're using, not the size of your sectioning because you could honestly do a bigger section if you wanted um, just a looser curl. Okay, top section, this is where everything matters. So I'm gonna bring it down. There's another trick I am going to show you for making them last longer. It's called curling on base. And when we did this in like beauty school, it was so that we could do curling sets because if you didn't curl, start the curling iron right on base, then when you went to pin it, it would be hanging off it wouldn't like sit right on the clean sectioning and do perfect like roller sets. So curling on base makes a huge difference when you're using a curling iron. I'm gonna clip this out of the way so you can see better. But there's two things I did here. I sectioned at a diagonal. When you think of a basketball and you think of the lines that go on it, even though it's cutting it in half, it still is going at an angle. So I like to curl, or I like to part my section at an angle like this, always. And then when I, when I place my curling iron, I'm gonna line it up with the part line so that I'm curling on base, meaning that I can get the curling iron as close to the top of this section as possible. Because if I went in completely vertical, I can't get really close. I can only get, I don't know, about here, and that's where the curl would start. And the higher up you can get your curl to start, that dictates how long it's gonna last. So it's totally worth doing it this way. And after you do it for a while, it's gonna just be autopilot. So I'm gonna curl on base and over direct. So this is gonna come almost completely in front of my face. So I'm pulling this forward, going like this, bringing it directly in front of my face and clicking through because it's a very fragile piece. <laughs> but you see how the curl can start almost right at my part 
it's gonna last forever. That is huge, especially when I'm like, oh yeah, I can just curl my hair once and then I can go like four days in between washing and it lasts and I don't have to touch it up. It's these steps. This is how long it lasts. It really doesn't have that much to do with what it looks like. I mean, there are minor details, but this is more insurance so that what you, the time that you invested will last a long time. So I just did another one, diagonal again, curling away from my face, lining the curling iron up with the part line and over directing. So as soon as I make that first turn, I swing the handle forward to over direct and then click it out. And again, look at that. My curl is already starting way up here. Okay, I have not been rotating my curls. This is a tip that will change what it looks like. So I never rotate my curls towards my face in front of my ears. I just feel like it doesn't look right personally. I just don't do it. But once I get to just past my ears, I like to rotate my curls because that's where it creates volume. Like, did you used to tease your hair back in the day? I definitely did. And I was very good at it, I have to say. I, it looked like a bump it. And if you were born in the 80s, 90s, then you can enjoy this with me because I'm really proud. But if like my little sister, she's 17 when she sees pictures of me from like junior high and high school, she's like, wow, Amy Winehouse. I dig it. I'm like, it was cool, I promise. <laughs> so I'm rotating my curls because that gives me volume. See how it starts high up and because it's rotating, you'll see when I brush it out that it has so much volume in the corners. I'm always, you're always creating the finished shape. Just keep that in mind, how it's gonna, how it's gonna lay. Okay, another front section. When at a diagonal, I'm gonna line up my curling iron in a ribbon um, flat, flat sectioning so that it can wrap all the way around the curling iron. I want it to be like seamless because also I've noticed with the ribbon curls, that's how you get the most shine because it's flat so it reflects the light really well. I just love how it looks. I know I'm biased, but it is my favorite and it lasts a long time. And if you wear extensions, this is the easiest for you to blend with your extensions, especially if you have like some short pieces that are really stubborn. Um, this is also, the same curl style that I use when I'm trying to make someone's hair look thicker, I'll take just like bigger sections. So if you have shorter hair than I do, let's say your hair is like to here. Don't worry about curling your very underneath section. It's completely pointless because you're maybe gonna get one turn out of your curling iron. And honestly, if you can leave it straight, then it makes your ends look thicker, which makes your hair look thicker. It's all an illusion. So I'm rotating, this is that corner, corner section. I'm rotating it towards my face. So when you switch directions, your clamp will start from the back and curl towards your face. All the other times your clamp starts in the front and curls away. So when in doubt, hold your air in front of you, you should see the clamp facing you in the mirror. Okay, just a few more sections. Have you noticed that I'm not really spraying anything? You can, but you don't need to. I would say the only times where it might be worth it is if you have a very, very silky, soft texture. Like it's too healthy, you know what I mean? Then you might wanna prep your hair with something. I don't recommend doing anything that's wet. So all the products I'm using are dry. Dry shampoo is awesome. There's a few different kinds of dry shampoo and the kind that has more grit to it. There's a few other brands that do this and they're not so powdery. Those ones are great for prepping um, the sections so that your hair just has something to hold on to when you're curling it. And I've seen better results with it, with your hair not getting weighed down in humidity when you use dry styling products to prep uh, your hair and then to spray when you're finished rather than putting on something like the extreme big sexy hair or bed head, like they work, but they are heavy and your curls will not last longer than a day and or it'll just go really flat or feel gross. Like I am minimal. <laughs> I don't wanna wash my hair that often. I wanna just get the most out of the time that I'm gonna invest in doing my hair. I am a mom of three. I have a business. I don't have time. No one has time for this, but it's necessary. It's a necessary thing. And you wanna feel good and look good. So I totally get it. Okay, got one more curl. So if you are going to use the um, Dura shampoo to prep each, prep each section, you're not gonna use it in the way that you normally would where you put it at your root. Not at all. Stay off your root. Only spray from your, from your mid strand to ends. Okay, so I'm gonna let these cool while I talk to you. 
So this one, Unite has uh, three different dry shampoos and this one is the one with texture in it. So you can spray this on your roots, you'll get the most um, absorption, but also like a volumizing aspect because of the texture spray. But you can also use this very light-handed from your mid strand to end. So when you spray it, make sure that it's a good, I don't know, 10, 10 inches to a foot away from your hair so you're not like caking it. And if you're gonna spray this first, spray it, let it sit for a second so it's not like cold or tacky, and then go in and use your curling iron. If you need extra hold, you could then follow up after you curl your section with your dry texture spray from Unite. The reason I love this is because you can still brush through it. So now that my hair is a little bit cooler, I'm still gonna let it keep cooling. I'm gonna spray this all over. And you'll notice I'm not spraying top down. You always wanna spray styling products, your dry styling products from the bottom up. That creates the most volume, gives you the most lift. If you're going top down, then you're spraying it to stay flat. You're making this part heavy, get dirtier quicker, and we don't want that. So hold your hair out so that you can spray mid strand ends. I love Unite because everyone who's used Unite, I've referred this for so long. I carry it in my salon, it is a professional brand, but it's a huge step up from drugstore, but it's not, I mean, professional brands can really range in price. They can get, you can buy a texture spray for 50 or $60 from Nordstrom um, or even in, the, in a salon. So I love that this one's right in the middle. I'd say for sure when you're buying professional products too, because you don't have a lot of fillers in it, it's gonna last like, if you used it every day, it would still last three months. Most of the time, people need to refill twice a year. And Unite does run sales every once in a while. So if you're curious, message me or comment below and I'll let you know <laughs> about that. But this is one of my staples. I never wanna run out of it. I keep stock on it all the time. Okay, so when you are finished curling, you want it to totally cool. I usually do my hair first, then I do my makeup so it has time to completely set and then I will brush it out. So look at my curls, finish product, okay? Now I'm gonna take my detangler brush. Again, I love this one from Ensemble because it's not going to undo what I just did. It's just going to brush it out, detangle, keep everything soft. I also like to brush my hair forward and down just to give it even more volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, woo, <laughs> there's the volume. Okay, do you see those corner pieces? Now you see why I love them so much? Everyone, everyone thinks I'm crazy at this level. They're like, okay, we know. Curl those ones forward. I'm like, you don't understand. It makes a huge difference. I feel like I have a flat piece. Yep, no, maybe. Yep, I'm gonna redo this little corner. But the finished product, I am obsessed. And this will last, I'm not even joking, a few days for sure. And if you live in humidity, make sure you're not grabbing sticky hairspray. Anything wet and humidity is like the worst combination. You wanna use dry styling for sure. And another reason why I love this, I think I already told you, but I can brush my hair after. I can brush my hair day over day and it's not tacky. It's not, some things dry your hair out too much and it can actually make it really brittle. So you wanna be careful with that, but this one doesn't. I'm just so happy. I, I've probably pushed this for like six years. It's just a hands down staple for me. So between these two, love them. Of course, have to brush out my curls. And then my curling iron, at the very least, get a one inch. If you're using a curling iron and you feel like it's just not doing what you want it to do, it might be old. It might just be time to change it because a curling iron, you're not gonna notice when it goes down, when it's not getting as hot as it used to be because even at it working barely, like it's still gonna burn your hand. It's not like you can check it and decide if it's you know lost its lost its flare. So it might just be time to replace, replace it. Another thing is if, if it's still not working well, you can always go down another size. I've done this with a three quarter. It's just a little bit tighter at first and then you brush it out and it's gonna loosen. So don't be afraid to go down a few sizes. I'd say the parameter is don't go past a one and a quarter as far as how big they get. I, I love how that looks for like a nice round brush look but it never stays well for me over time. So that's what I recommend. I can also blend my extensions with this super easily. I'm just gonna spray for finishing. Love it. Okay, go ahead and put in the comments any extra questions you have. I am going to be on YouTube very much this year. It's my only focus. So I'll be posting videos a couple times a week. I know, who am I? 
but just wait, it's gonna be good. <laughs> so let me know what you wanna see. If you like this tutorial, share it with a friend, comment with any questions, and check out all the links in the description for anything that I talked about.